Before we get started, I wanted to say a word to everyone about the channel. On June 3rd, I celebrated the anniversary of my first posted video on YouTube. Over the last year, Roasted Opinions has come a long way, and it's because of you that this channel has grown so fast. I wanted to take a minute and thank you sincerely for your support. I'm looking forward to the coming year. On with the video then. Let's see now. New video uploaded. Description written. Search tags done. End screen links created. Added to the episode playlist. Thumbnail uploaded. Link saved so that I can advertise. Publishing scheduled. Save. Okay, we are ready. Just got to show the video when it publishes. Now let's see how we're doing. Hmm. I lost a subscriber. That sucks. And Social Blade says, Well, that sucks even more. I'm losing views and watch time too? What the? Maybe I'll check on some bigger channels and see if they have anything to say about this. <laughs> wait, wait, what? Another apocalypse? Okay, now it's definitely time for some Roasted Opinions. This video was just going to address some channel suppression issues that I noticed. However, it seems that yet another adpocalypse has started. It looks to be a real nightmare, too. To me, an adpocalypse is the hurricane in the next county. It destroys businesses, destroys people's hard work, and damages the platform. But it doesn't normally hit me. Roasted Opinions is not monetized and small enough that it may escape notice if I keep my head down. But I'm not going to do that. When channels are deleted or demonetized en masse, the whole platform suffers. For YouTube, that's lost revenue opportunities from advertising and a damaged reputation. For creators, the impact is far greater. And for the entire online community that is social media, this kind of censorship harms us all. Yes, I said censorship, because that's what this is, deciding which content is worth watching and which is worthy of ad placements. And yeah, I know that part of this, at least, is because Steven Crowder cracked a bunch of offensive jokes, and so did a lot of other creators. I know that this offended someone enough to raise a huge stink about it. And I know that YouTube is caught in between two groups which are now both quite angry and quite convinced that they are in the right. And so we face yet another round of the three Ds. Demonize, demonetize, and deplatform. Consider this, though. Among the channels hit are comedy channels demonetized or deleted for jokes. Commentary channels demonetized or deleted for debates. History channels demonetized or deleted for featuring clips of old propaganda. And honest to goodness, journalism channels demonetized or deleted for video clips which faithfully report the situation as it was on the ground. Left, right, and center, too. Algorithms don't normally check voter registration cards nor minority status when they take action. That sends a message. YouTube decides what's funny, what's worth discussing, what history is, and what is legitimate reporting, or at least their algorithms do and all at the behest of people who insist that they are being oppressed by hate speech. People who are just now realizing that they are taking out the channels of their own friends in some cases because they had to put their indignation on social media and get the storm rolling. To those who are so deeply offended, I'm sorry that you are offended. It happens sometimes to everyone. It's just a part of living in a diverse society where different people think different things. Still, I have to say that this is what happens when you raise a hue and cry about your offended status. This was a tempest in a teacup, much ado about nothing, but the cries were loud enough that they could not be ignored. And yeah, that means that people whom you know and like get clobbered along with the rest of them. That's what happened the other times when there was an adpocalypse, and that's what's happening now. 
Some of you who are so deeply incensed about mean words are going to log onto your channels and discover that you too have been demonetized or even deleted for violating YouTube's terms of service. It always, always happens. Now, I wore a uniform and served my country for over 20 years to protect the rights of everyone in America. I spent a sizable amount of time away from my family defending the rights of people in other countries, too. Years, in fact. And this is the bitter truth of that service. I gave up my right to free speech while I wore that uniform to defend the free speech of other people, knowing that some of them would use that right to say the most offensive things in public. And do you know, I'd do it again, because free speech is that important. And that includes both your right to lodge your complaints and their right to say offensive things in the first place. If neither of you is breaking the law or calling for other people to break the law or provoking other people into breaking the law, then what both of you are saying is protected by the First Amendment. In 2017, the Supreme Court said so unanimously and Mattal v. Tam, 15-1293. I'm including a link for that case in the description. In that case, the court held that Simon Tam's argument that his use of a racial slur as the name of his band was prohibited by the Disparagement Clause of the Lanham Act, which covers patents and trademarks, despite the fact that he was using a slur that was employed against Asians like him. The Supreme Court also decided that this clause was in fact unconstitutional because, quote, public expression of ideas may not be prohibited merely because the ideas are themselves offensive to some of the hearers, unquote. This affirms the opinion of the Supreme Court in numerous other cases, that only the government is restricted in its speech, the very reason why I, as a soldier, couldn't exercise my free speech rights. Now, YouTube also recently announced that they are going to change the way that subscribers are displayed. Instead of exact counts, all channels above 1,000, in other words, all channels which might be monetized, will have their subs rounded off except on their own studio page. Social Blade and YouTube have both confirmed that this will affect how sites like Social Blade work, as live counts will be rounded there as well. Now, this channel isn't big enough to be affected by that situation either. This channel really isn't big enough yet for most people to notice what happens to it. But I do. Go figure. I'm the creator. And I've noticed something peculiar in my analytics. While YouTube doesn't display it, Social Blade does, and I'm losing views and watch time. You know, those other two statistics which I have to accumulate in order to grow as a channel and earn monetization. Maybe that's part of why YouTube is interfering with live subscriber counts on Social Blade. They've realized that creators use tools like this to keep an eye on their channel and not just YouTube's internal analytics, which strangely enough, don't show negative view counts or watch time. Now that's just incredible, YouTube. Most people can't go back in time and unwatch something. You, however, have found a way to make sure that for all intents and purposes, they can. Did you use a flux capacitor? Did you think that this would go unnoticed? I can tell you honestly, um, no. Just, no. If this is affecting my channel, then how is it affecting bigger channels who are monetized? Say, the Britisher, who puts out really good content and yet loses subs every time he posts before he gains them. Or David Cullum over at Computing Forever. How about those channels which lost so many subscribers over the last few years that their creators have abandoned them? That, of course, could be because their content just isn't that good, but I tend to believe that changing algorithms and changing standards had something to do with it. Computing Forever has made a really good video about this, which was demonetized almost immediately. Nor is David Cullum alone. A quick search will show that YouTube censorship videos are fairly common. Some of them date back several years. It's an ongoing problem for creators and the platform. The link is in the description if you want to check out Cullum's video. YouTube may think that this is good for business, but it isn't. Need I remind YouTube once again that independent content creators are the backbone of your business. 
if we weren't here, then your content would all be repackaged material from legacy media outlets, and honestly wouldn't attract much new attention for YouTube. It would leave you competing directly with Netflix, Hulu, and other online streaming services, and you would be competing directly with them over access to the content, not just viewers. You should be thanking your independent creators for uploading hundreds of hours of content every minute and making and keeping YouTube relevant. Instead, you are clobbering their channels. Again. Now I get it. You don't want to monetize content which will piss off your advertisers. You want to keep your revenue streams pouring in and you don't want to advertise on small channels. That's why you set monetization standards and I'm not complaining about them. I will gripe about having the growth of my channel suppressed, though. My subscriptions per video going down tells me that I need to keep working to improve my content, and that's fine. My view counts and watch time showing negative numbers tells me something else, though. It says that you absolutely don't care about smaller creators like me who haven't landed enough viral videos to blow past your algorithms and start showing up in the trending tab. Oh yeah. That's right. It seems that you're having problems with the trending tab algorithms too, aren't you? CNN only needs 10,000 views on a video to hit trending, but independent creators need hundreds of thousands of views, if not millions, on their videos to have them show up. Coffee Break, another independent channel, did a great video on this. I'll link it in the description too. That doesn't mention the recommended videos feature, which has recently decreased channels' reach to new viewers and therefore limited the growth of some channels to below the rate at which they can expand. How about putting the pinch on those who place external links in their descriptions, which targets both those who make sponsored videos and those who are citing their sources so that viewers can go look for themselves? What about automatically sifting views to leave only the quality views? or unsubscribing people solely because they haven't watched in a while. Perhaps that doesn't give much chance to creators to recapture their subscribers' interest, especially when you aren't boosting their content to subscribers unless they've clicked the notifications bell and they watch often. What if the creator needs to take a hiatus to deal with real life or just to enjoy a short vacation from the grind of making content and staying ahead of the algorithms? When they come back, their channel is now back to a more limited distribution, isn't it? Not to mention that a lot of subscribers will have met the threshold for the algorithms to remove them. You've built a system designed to push independent creators to their limits to try to grow their audience and punishes them for taking a break to recharge their batteries and come back with better content. There really isn't a mechanism for allowing creators to take that break, is there? You could create a hiatus tab for your bigger creators and give them a chance to upload a quick ad for their channel, which would play on similar channels to let their subscribers know that they are coming back on a certain date. That would build more momentum for those with monetized channels on which you run ads and allow your independents the chance to take that break once in a while and catch their breath without their channels dying in the meantime. I know that this may sound silly, but it actually worked for television networks for decades. You might try it out with your play button channels at least and see if it drives more views and subscriptions which will give you more ad revenue placements from paying customers. I know that this is all business. My channel, although it's still just a serious hobby for me, is a business which I hope to monetize as it grows. Your platform is also a business working with a lot of independent contractors who are trying to operate their own businesses as well. That's why, instead of just levying criticisms, I'm proposing at least one possible solution to one of these problems. More subscribers are gained from more exposure on the platform, which means more views and more growth, and more chances for your advertisers to advertise. What's more, you won't have to pay to create advertising for those channels because if you give them the opportunity, I'm sure that these channels will create and upload the advertising for you. And thank you for the fact that their channels are growing more quickly and consistently. You can use the ad placements which are otherwise unused on other videos. These creators aren't getting paid if there are no ads running there anyway, so there won't be any lost income for them or for you. You could even create a slogan 
like independent creators, for the campaign. I expect that you would want to vet which channels use this feature, of course. Limiting it to those big play button channels initially, or setting it up to run ad placements based on subscriber counts might help. And it would make sense that channels would have to be in good standing to have ads for their channel run on other channels. No AdSense revenue for those creators, of course, not for those independent creator hiatus ads, So you would have to limit the number of those ads running to one out of every four ads, or something like that. But it would grow those channels. It could grow the platform further. It could persuade more people to invest in your company. Or to place paid advertising with you as the potential reach of those ads expands with the number of monetized channels. It could result in more people signing for a paid subscription to get rid of all those extra ads. That is, if YouTube decides that they are done with the latest round of this channel is not acceptable, maybe everybody could win for a change. Maybe the platform and the creators could benefit. But not if YouTube keeps demonetizing channels.